Hello, Renee Flamont here. You guys were talking today about something that I now know how to do, but I didn't always know how to do. So I'm hoping that I can save you from making the mistakes I made. The best way to deal with a narcissist is not to argue. I know! How can, it, how can you possibly not argue with them? When they are being so ridiculous, it's really hard not to point it out and fight and argue and try to make them see your point. But why? The reason arguments with narcissists take three, four, six hours is because, well, you think, because that's how long it takes me to get my point across. No, no, no. We're saying the same thing for three hours, waiting for their reaction to be commensurate to what they did wrong. Waiting to see some empathy. Waiting to see some glimmer of understanding. I doubt that in a three-hour talk, there's really anything different being said for all 180 minutes, I bet most of our points can be made, let's give it 10 minutes, even 20 minutes. So you're repeating the whole time. Why? We're waiting for some kind of understanding. What we're waiting for is what they lack. That is the empathy that we discuss they have none. So I think of all of the three hour talks I did, all of the eating of the crow I've done, all of the reaching out, the olive branches, the white flags, with any one or more of many narcissists that have been in my life. And I think all of it was for naught. They do not have the same ability as you do, as I do, to understand anything that you're telling them. They will not, you're trying to put them in your shoes so that they understand how much they hurt you. That's what empathy is. Empathy is putting yourself in someone else's shoes, right? Sympathy is not that. Sympathy is, you can feel sympathy, somebody's mother died. You can feel sympathy, somebody's dog died, even if your mother's alive and you've never had a dog. You can feel sympathy. Empathy, you're trying, God forbid. <laughs> Terrible examples. But empathy, you're trying to put them in your shoes. You're trying to paint them a picture of how they made you feel. They're never, ever, ever going to be in your shoes and understand how you feel. They'll fake it. They might tell you, yep, yep, I understand. Mm -hmm. They might fake cry. They may even have tears. They may say, I'm sorry. Don't let that be a myth. I always mention that because people think that's a myth. Well, he said he's sorry. He can't be a narcissist then because they can't apologize. They'll say anything. They'll say anything. They can't feel sorrow. They don't feel guilty. They don't have a conscience or remorse or any kind of sense of, maybe that was a little far. Maybe I shouldn't have done that. That seems like that was a mean move. They'll never do that. Self-reflect like that. So all of the arguing, I think back, I tried to explain so much, you guys. I'm trying to save you the time, the tears, the energy, the hours, hours and hours of time and the crying and the exhaustion and the sleepless nights and that you can't eat or you eat too much or you're sleeping or you can't sleep all upset because you're all raveled up in last night's talk or the talk we're going to have tonight. Guess what? They're not going to understand anything you say anyway. What's more, they don't care. They don't care. And the minute you start to defend yourself, which you will have to do because they will say something offensive, the minute you try to defend yourself, you will be gaslighted every single time and throughout the whole chat. 
I feel like I need to do another video on gaslighting coming up because there's been some commentary lately, both in my audience and elsewhere that indicates to me that people don't know what it is. It comes from a movie with Andrew Bergman. He tries to make her think she's crazy. That's the bottom line real quick, okay? So every single time you say something that say they did, are you crazy? You're out of your mind. You're psychotic. You're insane. I would never do that. For you to even ask me that. Oh, are you calling me a liar now? Like, they'll come out with all that kind of stuff. Yes, I am calling you a liar. No, I'm not crazy. I found the receipts. Yes, you were with her. Yes, you did do that. Say that. Do this. Whatever, whatever you're trying to talk to them about, they're going to deny it. They're going to lie. They're going to paint themselves as either the victim, the martyr, or the hero. They're going to blame you for everything is your fault. Every, all of it. Every, all of it is your fault. All of it. They're going to do that. And they're not going to care about anything but being right. That's their stance. That's what's most important to them. Not the peace between you. Not the love between you. Say it's a... It could be a friend you've had for 30 years. It could be a family member. It could be, you know, uh, maybe you, even though you have a thing, you, you're not ready to, I don't know. But they're not going to take blame. They're going to gaslight you and say you're crazy because they can't take the blame. They can't take the responsibility for it being a defunctory relationship. So here you are trying your hardest to deal with this narcissist, talk to this narcissist, explain to this narcissist. I know my head's all over the place with this because I keep thinking about different attempts I made through the years. So if I'm speaking choppily, je m'excuse. So much effort. I'm looking at my porch. So much effort. And to no avail. I never once came out of a talk feeling good. Did you? Well, yeah, we just talked the other day and we're, we're coming off the weekend and we're going to have, you know, a uh, start anew and we're going to, uh-huh. Let me know how that goes. Because they'll say anything to appease the situation and make the arguing stop once they stop getting fuel from it. Because they will get fuel from exacerbating you so. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think there's people on this earth now that wish they could still aggravate me and they're probably a little thrown that they can't any longer because I've moved well past this now. I now understand fully well that the best way to deal with a person like this is to not deal with them anymore and not try. They're not going to see your point as clear as your point is to you and the thousand people around you. The narcissist, toxic, whatever you want to call your person, person is going to sit in their cement and be right. Do you understand me? They're never going to see your side and go, oh, I guess I can see that. Even if they say those words, that's just to make you shut up. Make it stop. Oh, just make it stop. Are you done? Are you done? Are we done? I'm sure you get that from your narcissist when you do try to talk to them. I've gotten that many times from my romantic partner. Are we done? We talked about this. When we while, you know you never talked about it. This is the first time you're trying to talk about it. And they're like, we already talked about this. No, you didn't. It's pointless. I wish I could tell you how pointless it is. I wish I knew how pointless it was all of those millions of hours in my lifetime spent on these kinds of people. I wish I knew and I could get that time back. No, I'm glad I went through it because I learned. I went through the mud with no boots, tried everything, did it, spent the effort, lots, lots, lots of effort, only to ha be disappointed in the end, frustrated that they don't understand you. They're not going to understand you. That's my point, ever. So go into it. If you do want one last shot, go into it. They're not going to understand. They have a capability that is limited. They are emotional toddlers. They have the inability to grasp what you're saying. They only see their point like a three-year-old. They'll have a temper tantrum when you point out their faults like a three-year-old. They will lie, cheat, and steal their way out of it. I hope a three-year-old doesn't do that. But you know what I'm saying? 
You're not getting this new, renewed person because they agree to have a chat with you. Save yourself the time and trouble and move on to someone who does appreciate you, doesn't denigrate you, will understand you, and with whom you can have an actual back and forth relationship an equal distribution of communication and healthy ideas and maybe expressions of sentimentality and whatever. Even if you disagree, it can be healthy. What they do is a constructed manipulation. They'll make you think they're listening, they're not. And they're never gonna see your point. You know, the next time we're gonna talk about on Wednesday is when you challenge the narcissist and how that can really be a very unsettling place, but we're going to hit that topic on Wednesday. Thanks for watching, you guys. See you then.